Um, well, thanks everyone for, for making it and for signing up to be a mentor for this. Um, this is a uh, very, very popular program, I think, especially as the students that we've been working with have started to see that uh, this has been really helpful to the people who've gone through it in the past. All of a sudden, we get a lot more interest than we were expecting. So um, I really appreciate everyone uh, being here and, and helping out with this. Um, I'm going to pretty quickly go through what to expect from this, but it's not too much. Um, your role is really just kind of there to help the students become more familiar with what it's like to be a software engineer a little bit and just kind of like think through problems on their own instead of having the step-by-step -step guidance they're used to. Um, and so a lot of it is pretty chill. Um, it's been pretty easy and the students have been getting a lot out of that um, despite that. So we'll go into it pretty quickly. Um, so I wanted to, to talk to you. So it, uh, any minute now, you should actually be getting an, e an email introduction um, with some more information about the uh, the students that we're going to match you with. Um, we're going to match you with two to three students for this group. Um, most of them are somewhere around college sophomores. Uh, they've taken intro level computer science classes. Some of them will be quite a bit more experienced. Some of them will be more on the baseline level of experience. Um, so, you know, you're going to see a little bit of a range there. Uh, but all of them are pretty committed to computer science. This is kind of an extra thing that's above and beyond um, what their, their, their school's not requiring them to do this or something. It's it's something that's arranged by their school, but they don't have to be here. They're here because they're excited um, and really passionate about learning more about how to make cool software stuff. Um, so we're going to match you with two to three students. They're going to be working on one specific task. That task is with a partner open source project. And um, we'll talk about that. I, don't expect that anyone will know any of the open source projects in advance. That's totally fine. That's normal. That's actually part of what we're looking for your help with. Most of the students are uh, from low income backgrounds. A lot of them are working to pay for school. Most of them attend smaller uh, state schools or um, community colleges across uh, mostly the state of California. Um, so, you know, you're not going to be working with students uh, from really top schools for the most part. And that's why this is really cool, because uh, a lot of them, their schools don't really have the budget to offer lots of um, really cutting edge uh, education on computer science. And this is going to provide them with some of that. Um, the other thing that this gives a lot of the students, and one of the reason they're here, is it gives them something really cool to put on their resume, because a lot of their colleges are not recruited from. And so uh, most of them are, you know, going to be struggling a lot more than average to uh, to just get their, their foot in the door at a, a company. And having something like this to show for it is, is pretty helpful. Um, and uh, yeah, I believe all of the students right now are in California. There may be a couple that are like traveling or something like that. Um, right now, we're exclusively kind of still doing this as a closed pilot for um, uh, that's funded by the California state budget. So as I kind of mentioned, the goal of this program is just to help students get some practical experience um, in software engineering. We want to we say this is probably two years earlier in their education than usual. A lot of people are, you know, do like internships and uh, that's how they get their experience. Um, there are a lot of things uh, you learn in an internship, and um, we want to get them some of that basic level training a little bit earlier so that they can start to build up more practical experience um, uh, throughout the years so that before they get their first internship, they're actually really, really knowledgeable already. Um, we want them to keep contributing to open source software. A lot of the students who go through this program have gone through this program for the last year uh, have kept con contributing to open source software. Um, and like I said, we want to, them to build up a good resume that will help them uh, get their foot in the door in an internship or a first job. Uh, so far, um, of the students who've gone through this in the past, it seems like somewhere around half of them have gotten an internship the next year, which is uh, quite a bit higher than it had been before. Uh, so it seems like this is helpful both in terms of the skills that they need and the, um, you know, the thing that's actually going to attract the attention of recruiters. Um, so going to what to expect from this program really quickly, um, what we've asked for from you all is one meeting with you a week, um, 60 to 90 minutes, that's uh, three weeks, and that's it. So three meetings, um, that, that is all we're asking for from you. There shouldn't be much prep that you need to do beforehand. Um, that's all you're signing on for. You're welcome to do more if you want to, um, but that's all you're signing on for, and that's usually what uh, I think almost every mentor has done. 
the students are also going to meet amongst themselves every week. So in addition to meeting with you once a week, the students are also going to meet with each other. Um, and that's kind of like pair programming style things. They're going to be working on the same task. This gives them an opportunity to talk to each other and try to solve their own roadblocks um, themselves, uh, realize what their you know, problems they, uh, they need to solve, things like that. Um, they are also going to be putting in at least six hours a week of independent work. So I put an asterisk there. It'll probably depend a little bit. Some students will probably do more. Some students will probably do less. If you feel like someone is literally doing nothing, please do let us know. Um, but again, most of these students are really self-driven because they've signed up for this with you know, no uh, real benefit to them other than that they want to learn. Um, so uh, yeah, so about uh, six hours a week of independent work, and they'll have some support from us in that as well. OK. So when I say that, that you're signing on to, to run three meetings, these are what those three meetings are going to be. This week, right now, the students are doing onboarding training. They're learning the basics of um, just kind of like how to read a code base and get started when you don't know anything about it. Uh, and then today, they actually learned what projects they were going to be working on. So they're starting to do some research on that. There's no meeting this week. The students are working all on their own. Next week, um, the first meeting that we're asking for from you as mentors is a where to start meeting. Um, the students are going to, before this meeting, have uh, some ideas of what we call starting points. Uh, that's like places in the code base or in the documentation that they think are related to the issue they've been assigned to solve. They're all going to have uh, some ideas of what, the, what they think those starting points might be. Uh, they probably will not have tested them, but this is their first experience in taking a code base and, and just sort of trying to figure out what code is going to be related to it. And so they're going to be coming to this first meeting um, with those starting points and with some initial attempts to try to get the project running. So what we're asking for from you for this upcoming week is uh, to have the meeting um, so that you can help them get the project running and then start to understand maybe enough of the code base that you can start to filter down or you know you might just happen to know which one of these is the best option, like come up with what is the place in the code base that's probably going to be related to this issue. So that's what the first week is going to start about. Uh, start off on. Um, you're going to be giving them some guidance, just trying to help them refine the ideas that they've come up with and turn that into a specific place in the code base that they're going to be looking to make some changes or a specific place in some documentation that's going to be related to those changes um, or whatever else is going to be needed, basically. So that's the guidance you're going to be giving them next week. The uh, week after that, is mostly going to be focused on coding help. We uh, ask the students to come prepared to that meeting with uh, specific questions. They all have to come up with at least one specific question for you, and specific means specific. And they definitely should have something really clear that they're asking for from you. Um, so this is an opportunity for you to sort of help them plan out what changes they need to make, uh, research anything else they need to, to use. Um, just kind of give them, again, some guidance there. They will also be uh, asking us for help, and I'll, I'll talk about that in a little bit, but there's also some TAs on our side that are going to be available to them to help them with that coding as well. Um, but you're going to be able to give them a little bit better of the sort of higher level guidance. Uh, and then the last week, uh, week four, the third week of mentorship, uh, is either going to be code help or code review. Um, if they're still not close to having a pull request done, um, then this is the chance for some specific, uh, more specific questions from them. Or if they are uh, and they they think that their code is ready, usually about half the teams are at this stage. Um, on the last week, you can do a code review. Um, there's just some really common problems, things like line endings, you know, stuff like that. Um, and if you have some extra time, you could also just chat with them about what it's like to to work in the tech industry. Um, the format of these meetings. Every week we will send you a discussion agenda and the students are going to be prepared for that agenda. So you should have already earlier today gotten the agenda for next week's meeting. Um, the following two meetings are gonna be a lot sparser um, because it's gonna be really driven by what specific questions the students have. But the students are actually turning into us sort of their agenda for each meeting. So each student uh, in advance of the meeting will have an agenda. Um, one thing we do ask for in all of these meetings, in addition to kind of going through the, the agenda, uh, just make sure that you're giving them feedback. One of the things that we've found with this program is that a lot of students feel like they're failing because they get to week two of a program and they haven't written any code. 
And every class that they've taken so far has been focused on writing code. And so when they get to week two and they're still just kind of planning out what code they're going to write or learning about the code base, they feel really bad. For, you know, for many of us, that's not unusual. Um, but uh, the students, that's super unusual. It's not what they're used to. They're used to, you know, I, they, they think that they should be spending every single day writing code. And if they're not writing code every single day that they're working on this, that's a problem. Um, so just give them, you know, uh, just give them some feedback that they're doing a good job, that figuring out what problem to solve is often the difficult part, um, that not knowing the answer to it doesn't mean that they've failed the test to become a software engineer, uh, that oftentimes uh, software engineers um, are, you know, also trying to figure out what to do. Okay, so that's it for um, the general format. I wanted to pause really quickly and see if we have any questions just on the meetings or the, the content of the meetings or kind of what to expect from students. Uh, sounds, sounds good so far. <laughs> cool. Sounds great. Okay, so just getting into some of the specific resources now that students are going to have. Um, the students are all in a Slack. Uh, there is no expectation whatsoever that you need to join that Slack. Again, we are literally only asking for one meeting a week for three weeks. Uh, but some mentors do want to be on the Slack. So if you want to, just reply to any email. We'll get you invited. Uh, but it's absolutely not required. <clears throat> um, and uh, just so you know, also the Slack, uh, the students are going to be doing stand-ups every Monday, Wednesday, Friday uh, amongst themselves. So they should also have some level of coordination there as well. Um, but that's another reason sometimes why mentors like to see the Slack. Um, most projects are going to be using GitHub code spaces. This is a replit style thing, or um, you may have also seen like, I can't remember the, the name of the other one, but basically it's a virtual machine with a code editor built in. Um, it's running Linux. Uh, Sometimes students will have problems getting things running in code spaces. Usually code spaces is better than desktop computers because most of these students are running really, really crappy Windows laptops that are like five years old. Um, if you want to, if the students want to, it is totally fine if they want to try to get it running on their local computer. Um, that said, if they are using um, Windows uh, WSL, Windows Subsystem for Linux, uh, tends to be the best uh, sort of option for doing that. But usually it takes much more time to get it running on a Windows computer than it is to get it running on a Linux virtual machine. So um, just be aware the students have access to this. Again, if you want access, uh, just send us your GitHub username. We'll invite you. And uh, you should be able to use this as well for free um, under our uh, organization. Uh, one more thing that the students have, uh, I think this is three of four things that they have access to. So we have been, as I said, this, this past week has been onboarding week. The students have been learning a lot. Um, we taught them just kind of what is open source software, pull request etiquette. Um, they should already know get before this, but we did kind of a get refresher. Um, and then we did some training on sort of breaking down lines of code. If you have a line of code, you don't know what it's doing. How can you sort of from context infer this? What are some things you can Google? Things like that. Um, we've taught them about how to read a, you know, basically like a file um, and just take a look at like what, you know, how these different pieces fit together, um, taking a look at maybe why they are, um, you know, using the names of things to infer what their meaning is, um, sort of tracing through how one function might call another function, um, basic debugging techniques there. Um, and then we've also uh, taught them basically to take a look at an entire code base. And from that code base, uh, you know, sort of try to figure out maybe the flow of information using context cues, uh, like the, the names of files, um, using search in GitHub to find uh, where methods are called, things like that that are going to be basic techniques for developers just to try to figure out how to get started with something. Um, we talked to them a little bit about building for contributing. Uh, one of the really common uh, confusion points that you may still get is sometimes students will follow a tutorial online on like how to install an app, um, but we don't want them to install the app. We want them to build the app from source. And that is obviously different um, and oftentimes not as well documented. Um, although all of these projects should be pretty decent on that. Uh, we talked to them about uh, GitHub code spaces. So again, how to use this uh, virtual machine IDE thing and a little bit of basic Linux commands. 
Um, and then uh, we uh, will be talking to them next week about pair programming and just some techniques for working with each other to kind of make progress. So those are resources that the, the students have. Um, with regard to the projects that we're going to be talking about, um, we, as I have said many times, do not have expect you to have any familiarity whatsoever with these open source software projects. Uh, that's actually very intentional. We have had mentors who have had experience with the projects and it's gone much worse. Uh, the reason for that is that the students are only ever meeting teachers or professors who already know every answer before it's asked to them. And uh, they will also often meet developers where, you know, if they're talking to a developer and they're asking a really, really basic question, you know, they're making another CRUD app or something like that. Well, how many CRUD apps have, you know, have you made recently, right? Like it's, it's super common, like, you know, the answer to a lot of those questions. And so they feel like professional software engineers just know what to do all the time. It's just something that you've learned. Um, and they think that either once they've passed all the tests, they will know everything about engineering, or they think that they have passed all the tests, but they don't know everything about engineering and like they're just an imposter, they don't know what's going on. Um, so there's a tremendous value to these students of just learning how to approach a problem when you don't know what's going on. And that's the really, really useful thing about having mentors that aren't really familiar with these open source projects is that you also won't know what's going on. And you'll be able to, to look at what the students are suggesting as like a starting point um, with a set of fresh eyes and say, okay, let's take a look at these files and see if I can figure out what's going on. Uh, you'll be able to look at the problems that they come to you with each week um, and say, okay, well, I, you know, I don't, I'm not an expert in, let's say, this particular logging library that's that's being called. Let's go look up the documentation for that. Let's do some Google searches for tutorials and start to figure out how it works. Uh, so because you're not experts in these projects, uh, what we found is that the students who go through this program are a lot more likely to learn those basic skills that will allow them to continue to contribute on their own. Um, I did want to say all of these projects, as I mentioned, were um, partner open source uh, projects. So all of them were um, uh, projects where we've talked to the maintainers. The maintainers are friendly. They're not super aggressive. Um, they have uh, contributing guides, or if they don't have a contributing guide, uh, they have uh, someone who is like, we have the email address of some of the maintainers, and they've just said, contact us uh, if you have any problems. Um, all of them are generally like pretty well documented. Um, the issues are pretty well written as well. Um, so the project should be pretty great uh, overall, and, and usually that's not been too much of a problem. Um, okay. So lastly, I just wanted to get into some pro tips here. Um, so here are some common problems that we that we find that students have faced in this program before. Uh, so one problem, uh, students are uh, really commonly afraid to start work because they're so used to knowing exactly what their first step is on a, a, a test or an, a homework assignment. It's usually very clear to them. Uh, it's not as clear now. And because they're so afraid to start work, um, they fall back into this mode of what they've learned at school, which is learning things, right? We're learning in, in air quotes. They need to learn things um, before they, they actually get started. It's really ambiguous when something is learned. Um, and so one of the common problems is if you ask the students to just learn, uh, you know, let's say they're doing some contribution on a, a project that uses Django. Um, if you just ask the students to do some research into Django, they will spend an entire week doing nothing but research into Django. I have seen students literally try to take notes on method signatures before. Like, it's not useful. Um, so, uh, for the, for this, uh, what we do recommend, especially early on when the students are, this is a little bit more scary to them, setting these kind of check offable goals, like something that's really clear, um, is is really helpful. So instead of just saying learn Django, say something like, here's a tutorial to follow, or even saying find one tutorial and follow it. Um, those those would be much more um, obvious when it's done. And so that way, the, if you're giving the students a, a task to complete before the next meeting, uh, you know that they will you know, not go too wild on this, uh, trying to procrastinate doing the hard stuff. Uh, I've already talked about this a little bit, but um, the expert fallacy. So this idea of um, when encountering a, uh, a bug or something like that, 
Um, students are going to kind of use you as the expert because they just think that you know the answer to everything. Um, they think that anyone who has a degree uh, should know the answer to anything. Um, and they will treat you as if you're just an instructor in their class and you already know how to do everything. Uh, again, some of this is mitigated by the fact that you won't know these open source projects. But some of it is, you know, is stuff that you probably will know. If they're getting a get error message, like there's a really good chance you've come up against that error message before, right? Like if you're, you know, looking at a, a generator in Python, you may have seen a generator in Python before they may not have. Um, so just be aware um, and uh, try to encourage problem solving for themselves. So if, if you think an answer to something is really obvious, uh, it can be really helpful to you, uh, to the students, if you, instead of giving them the answer, encourage them to start to think for themselves, um, rubber duck debugging, this idea of just saying, well, tell me about your problem, like describe how your code works. Just having them explain that to you can be really helpful. Um, give them leading questions. Uh, so if you know a problem is in a particular area, you might say, let me take a look at, you know, let's, let's walk through this one particular function again. Um, and then give next steps for research. So you can give them Google queries to, to use. Again, like oftentimes students don't even realize that programmers Google things uh, because they are so I, you know, caught up in this idea of the formal education system, which is that you're just supposed to know everything, uh, that they don't realize that like, yeah, actually it's not just students who are Googling the, the answers to things sometimes. Uh, okay, so that's pretty much it. The last thing that I just wanted to quickly mention is, as I addressed earlier, um, we don't have a slide for this, but as I addressed earlier, um, you are not the only ones giving them support. We have TAs who are going to be helping them starting next week, um, so they can book time with us at any time. Um, so uh, if they do need help or anything like that, if you're not able to give them the full amount of help that they need in your one hour uh, to 90 minute meeting, um, just you know, feel free to give them some some topics and, and they can book some time with us and we will help them walk through it as well. So that is pretty much it. Um, I think, yeah, we are uh, five minutes under uh, half an hour. Um, so I am happy to take any questions that folks have. I guess uh, I provided you the GitHub username, and um, I guess I also wanted to do the Slack thing. So I guess just in general, how much uh, can you just repeat how much we will know uh, about the project prior if we opt for that? Yeah, either way, uh, in um, if you haven't gotten this email already, it's probably going out within about 15 minutes. Um, you'll be getting the link to the GitHub repository that we've assigned the students to. Um, so. You should be able to take a look through it. Um, most of these issues, by the way, are really basic. I mean, there's a lot of testing, um, like adding a test for something. There's a lot of like fixing a bug that's on a particular line. Um, some of them are like converting things from JavaScript to TypeScript. Uh, there are usually a couple line of, co of code changes. Um, so my, my guess is usually mentors, if you take a look at the, the issue, you can start to get an idea of at least roughly where you would go to, to fix this. Um, and, and you should get that issue sent over later tonight. Um, that's totally separate from the GitHub username thing. We'll, we'll just give you access to the dev environment if you want to try running anything yourself. Um, and the Slack, uh, we'll add you to the Slack with the students just so that you can say hello and see what they're up to. Cool. Thanks. Yeah, no problem. Cool, cool, cool. Okay. Um, any other questions? All right, cool. Uh, thank you all again so much. Um, I, I just really want to emphasize this is a really unique opportunity for a lot of the students. Um, it's not something their schools usually have access to. Uh, and the students who've gone through this in the past have really expressed a lot of um, appreciation for the mentors who are putting in the time and uh, for everyone for doing this. Like we're, we're a nonprofit too. Uh, we wouldn't be doing this if we didn't think it meant a lot. So I really appreciate you, you taking the time. It's going to mean a lot to these students and um, hopefully they'll get a lot out of it. Cool. Okay. Well, that's it. Uh, you should get that email uh, in just a little bit if you haven't already with the, uh, the introductions and, um, and yeah, we're really excited for next week. Feel free to reach out if you have any other questions and I will see you all later.